Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another website review, and as you can see here, we're going to be talking about Redbubble. Redbubble is a print-on-demand website where you can sell your artwork printed onto different products to customers around the world. If this is your first time here to my channel, welcome, and I would encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss future videos of me reviewing websites such as Redbubble. In the past, I have reviewed um, websites like Artfinder, Art Majeur, ArtPal, Etsy, Fine Art America, and Sachi Art, and you can find those back in my channel, and I will also link those in the description below. I've also made two videos called Where to Sell Your Art Online and Where to Sell Your Art Online Volume 2, and in both of those I briefly go over 12 different websites where you can sell your artwork online, 12 in each of those videos. So you can check those out, I will also link those below, or you can find them in my channel. If you wanted to get a quick overview of some of the websites where you could possibly list your artwork to sell to customers from around the world. Before we jump right into this video here, I'm going to briefly talk about my pros and cons of Redbubble. You can see here, pros, it's free to sign up and list your work. There are 70 plus products you can put your art on. There's a large amount of traffic to the platform and you can set your profit margins. Some of the cons I think are you can't sell originals, it's just print on demand. It can be hard to get discovered because there are a lot of artists on this website and you are only paid through PayPal. Um, at least that how it, that's how it is for me in Canada. If that's different for you in another country, please let me know in the comments below. All right, so we are on the homepage here of Redbubble. Redbubble was founded in 2006 in Melbourne, Australia, so it is 15 years old. <clears throat> and their goal is to help independent artists creatively sell their work, sell their artwork, sell their designs. They also own... Um, T Public, T Public, Red Bu Red Bubble are part of the same company, and between the two of them, they have sold over 100 million worth of products to over 200 countries, which is pretty crazy. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about about um, kind of about Red Bubble. If you're interested, now that we're at the bottom of this page here, you can see there's the About Us. They have like a video there and everything. You can go check that out. <clears throat> and if you want to read about these kind of things that I'm talking about. I also have written, I have a written version of this article. I will link it in the description below as well, and you can read what I'm saying as well. All right, so if you're looking to sell your art, which is probably why you're here, you can click on the sell your art button at the bottom there, or at the very top, there is a sell your art button, so we will just click on that. And it just kind of gives you a brief overview of how things work at Redbubble. Redbubble, you upload your design, customers find and purchase the products they love, they produce those products, you don't produce anything yourself, and then it gets shipped by them and you get paid. There are over 70 unique products, so they have clothing, um, kids and baby stuff, phone cases, stickers, wall art, home and living which means like furniture as well not just art stuff or stuff for the bathroom they have stationery, they have accessories they have so many different products that you can put your art onto and I find that to be a good thing because um, as a traditional artist myself I am starting to dabble a little, little bit into graphic design but a lot of my traditional paintings are rectangular square or whatever and they don't look so good on uh, a lot of clothing for example but they do look good as um, prints of wall art or some of them look good um, on stickers or things like that or stationary you know and so even if you think your art might not look good on all the products that's okay you can select the products you like and make it available for that so and I will show you that a little bit later here anyone can sell on Redbubble it's pretty easy to sign up you can start selling from here and sign up or you can sign up in the top right here if you click on sign up I will just quickly show you make sure you select artist sign up you can put your um, email username and um, your password or your shop name I guess sorry not your username once I clicked on artist sign up there and then they'll send you a verification email and you can go from there Alright, so I'm going to just log in here and we're going to get going on some of the how to use artist stuff. So I'm just going to log in here.
and this is what it looks like when you're logged in on the home page some of your recently viewed and um, design picks for you if you are looking at stuff as well you can see those there the main hub for the artist account is if you click on your profile image or on those stat figures there just to click on the dashboard once you get to the dashboard this is where it gives you some tips it talks about your earnings insights earnings summary earnings by product audience traffic sources um, and so on from there this is where you can kinda get a brief overview of everything about your um, shop or your portfolio if you want to just see your shop you can cl again click on your profile image and go to view shop and this will give you an idea of what your shop looks like to other people so you can see I joined May 2017 oh wow so four years ago that's kinda crazy I have 64 designs you can view my profile you can shop the products you can sort them all that kinda stuff so I'm gonna click on view my profile because I'm curious there you go I have three followers I'm following two people and favorite of 28 designs I have links there to my website my Instagram my Facebook and my Twitter and you can I'll show you how to do that as well here so we're gonna go back to the dashboard and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, uploading our artwork first and then we'll get into payments and things such as that so to add a new artwork it's pretty easy you click on your profile image you can hit the add a new work button there once you're on the dashboard you can hit add new work it's the same thing so I'm just gonna click add new work it'll bring you to this screen you can upload a new work or you can copy an existing work if you have for example me as a traditional artist say I have many paintings that are 8 by 10 that I'm uploading so they're all the same size I could once I upload one of them and I select the products that I want it to be put on I kinda size them and I adjust them edit them a little bit and I don't want to have to do that over and over again for each of the ones that I'm uploading I can just copy that existing work change the name change the photo to the new one but then all of those things that I've selected before will stay the same and so it'll save you a lot of work if you're uploading files that are similar sizes or designs that are similar sizes and shapes um, here I'm just going to upload a new work notice that it recommends a minimum of a thousand pixel resolution we are going to click on that and it takes you to your documents so I'm just gonna upload one here I think it is this one yep and I'm gonna choose that one normally I'd have it actually named something but I'm not doing that here and then you're taken it'll be uploaded here you can add your title so the title of this one is actually just promise and then you can put tags tags are always important as I'm sure most of you know to help people find your work on Redbubble so this one for example is a landscape it's mountains it has wood burning forest fire regrowth flowers um, I like to call this type of work that I do geometric um, you could say it's even colorful you know things like that and then you can add a description I'll add one in later there or I'll just put a little short one this artwork depicts the regrowth in Waterton National Park after the Kino fire of 2017 there we go so that's basically what this does but I would encourage you when you're writing your description like it says here share the story of the meaning behind your work you don't have to give away any secrets but your audience will appreciate a little insight to why you created it or what you created so I would encourage you to write more in the description and that will help customers get more connected to it if you're needing to replace that image you can see you just hover over top of it click on it and then you'll be able to select a new file and right below here are your product previews 
So some of them are automatically enabled, as you can see with the green there. Some of them are disabled. If you want to enable it, just click on it, and you can enable it. You can see here this rectangular one kind of looks funny on the close. I don't often enable all of the clothes. Sometimes I will. But like a sticker, for example, looks great. Phone cases, say, you know, it's maybe you want the phone case part to actually show a different part of the painting or artwork. You can click on edit and scroll down here and maybe we want that center to be more in the middle. And you can see as I move this, it's adjusting it up here and you can move it where you want. You can center it, you can say it's not big enough, you can set the background color to be a certain color, maybe it'd be black. You can also scale the image. And so I could zoom way in there. But I'm going to keep it full size there with that mountain peak right close to the middle. And then when you're done, just click Apply Changes, and there it is. It's done. Say, for example, you have a floor pillow. I want to enable that. I'm going to edit that. And you can see that it doesn't fill the whole pillow. Well, you can go down. You can either set the background. Maybe I want a nice, a nice green color that matches some of the greens in the painting. Maybe you want a black. Or you can choose a pattern. I'm going to choose just a regular grid, put that down in the middle there, and now you can see it's just gridded onto the pillow. That will also work for clothes, that will work for many other things on here. So if your file um, doesn't quite fit properly for some of them, you can always choose this pattern. Maybe I'll choose the offset grid so it's not perfectly symmetrical. And I'll center that horizontally and vertically. There we go. There, there's a little design there. So I'll just apply those changes. You could do that for like a duvet, comforter, or shower curtain if your file isn't big enough. Because you need a, a pretty big file to be able to do that. They have travel mugs, scarves. Scarves is a good one. Let's just try that one again. Let's enable that. We will edit that. Let's choose our offset grid. Apply those changes. And there we are, there you can see it there. A drawstring bag, could enable that. A clock, and you can see there's just little white pieces around that clock, so I'm gonna go into the edit. It's already at 100% size. The frame color you can change. I'm gonna change it to black. The hand color, we'll leave it as black. And the background color, we will also change to black. Now you can see We'll apply those changes. And the hand colors are actually white. That's interesting. It didn't fix that. <laughs> but you can see the background there where it was white before is black. And that looks a little bit better, in my opinion. There's artboard prints, acry acrylic blocks and coasters, blankets, bath mats, and, you know, a ton. So much more, right? You can even make a mask now. Hopefully we don't need those much anymore. Here's a puzzle. If your image size was larger than this, mine was actually pretty small. It was just um, taken with my phone. And when I exported it off of iPhoto, or photos, not iPhoto anymore, photos, um, I didn't choose the largest resolution. And so it's just a small, a small file. But if you had a larger one, it would fit that whole puzzle area. Or you could just grid it for that puzzle and call it call it a day. I mean, is somebody going to buy a puzzle like that? In my opinion, probably not. So I'm going to keep that, that disabled. I'm not too worried. But sometimes you never know, so you could enable everything, because you never know what people are going to buy. They have some advanced products. They require a little more attention. I've never really done much with this. These are kind of new since I've um, started um, with Redbubble. I don't do a whole lot on Redbubble, but uh, you could check out some of those designs as well. Here you can get to media, select up to two. So this one is a painting and mixed media and that's it. So I'm going to leave it as that. If you had collections, you could then add it to a collection at that point. Default product in your shop. 
I usually just leave it as optimized, but if you wanted this one to be shown by um, an iPhone case, for example, you could select that and it would show up in your shop as mainly showing an, an iPhone case. Who can view this work? Anybody or private? You probably want anybody, so make sure that's selected. And is this mature content? This isn't, so I will select no. And the last thing you have to do is click off that you have the rights to sell this this um, artwork on these products. And that's, that's it for uploading your artwork. Um, it's actually quite straightforward. I like this system. It's all on one page. It's not you're not clicking through different pages, wondering what's coming next and when you need to add things. The editing of different products I actually find quite easy. And the fact that even if your file is smaller, that you can still enable a product is kind of nice. I know some other print-on-demand websites won't even allow you to enable it and do grid patterns like this. If your file isn't large enough for certain products, you just can't sell that type of product. So that is one plus I find with Redbubble. All right, then when you're done, you just hit save your work and it will take a second here and process it depending on how big your file size is will determine how most often how long it takes to process it this one was pretty small it was only a couple megabytes i think there we go it is complete and it will add it to my shop and portfolio as you can see here it's redirecting us to there we go and right away it asks you or it offers to help you share your work and so you can download these images of these products to then share to your social media or you can directly share them by clicking on the arrows um, to whatever platform you mainly work with and if you want to view it you can just click on that view button there and there you go there's a little description that I wrote there I should have put longer one and then there are all the products that you can see. There's 72 products. Or you could see if somebody wrote a comment. All right, so that's how you upload your work. So let's go back to our dashboard here. In your shop settings, that's where you can add. I'll quickly click on it and show you. That's where you can manage your collections and add collections. So maybe um, I could do that for mine because I have some acrylic paintings, I have some mixed media artwork, maybe you have some photography in there or you have some um, graphic designs. You could make collections for each of those so it's easier for people to kind of sift through your work. Um, I will talk about sharing your work right here. Like we just saw when we uploaded that work, there were different product images that we could um, share or download right from this page. And if you click here on Manage Portfolio, it'll take you to all of your works and you can do all of, like you can find images of all of your products for each of your different designs that you could share. Here it just gives you a few that you have. They also have what are called lifestyle templates. I've never used these, but it sounds like a cool idea. So you can use these photos and put your artwork on the different products to then share on your social media feeds using the hashtag find your thing. And that just kind of puts your products more in a relatable situation, you could say, and allows you to share it a little bit differently, which is kind of cool. One thing that you'll notice is that Redbubble doesn't have a place where you are paying them to promote your artwork on their website or elsewhere, um, which I actually really like. Many many other websites, they, you can pay uh, pretty big money for them to promote your work, and does it really work? I'm not really sure, but Redbubble keeps the playing field a little bit more even in that sense. Here they have a protect your work section here. And you can have watermarks placed on your images so people can't just download and copy your images. So I have some of those on mine here. Product pricing. Here is an important part. So if you're wanting to change um, the profit margins that you're making when an, an 
an item sells, this is where you do it. So you can see a t-shirt, the retail, or sorry, yeah, the retail price is $29 to $77, depending on all the different customizations or sizes and all that stuff. And your margin is between $9 and $24. And that's with the 50% markup. If I go to 100% markup, and that's going to double my margin, right? So instead of 930 something, it's now 1860 something. Notice that the retail price also goes up. So if I go back to 50, it starts at 29. And those $9 that you're adding to your profit are added to the retail price. So the more profit you want, the more your items are going to cost because that base price set by Redbubble to, for them to produce and um, send your products is always going to stay the same. But you can set the percentage of what you want to make above and beyond that by using this percentage. You can go over 100% as well. That's just an example of what I did there. And you can do that for each individual item. You can see here all the way down. Or if you highlight one, you can see it says apply to all. So if I wanted 100% markup on every single product, I can just put it in one and then select apply to all and it will switch for each of those. Google Analytics, if you have a Google An Analytics account, you can put your web property ID here and it'll help you just um, understand more of who's visiting your Redbubble shop, what um, words are they using in their searches, you know, where are they from, kind of things like that, and that will help you maybe uh, choose your tags more properly for your different works and things like that sales history so we'll click on that and you can see what sales you've made i haven't made a ton <laughs> but i've made some i make a handful of sales every year it seems like with with uh red bubble here and so i've made a couple this year in april and in march both were greeting cards um to different places actually same painting but different places and it tells you yeah the destination country destination state the status, so I still haven't been paid for those, but I will be once I reach a threshold that I will be talking about soon. It tells you the retail price, the manufacturing fee, and how much you make for each of those. And those will all be listed there. Payment history, you can see when you've been paid. So I've been paid a few other a few times, 2018, 2020, a couple times. Earnings to be paid, I still have 443 waiting there um yeah i'll just mention it here before i think it was actually this year um in may i believe they made a payment threshold where you have to reach 20 dollars now before they will actually pay you out that obviously wasn't the case before as you can see i have smaller ones here and in my opinion that's fine um for me though when i only make a handful of of sales off of Redbubble each year. It's kind of a pain because then it's going to take a little bit to build up $20 <laughs> to get. But I mean, I, I think on their end, it decreases their um, fees to PayPal would be my guess. I'm not 100% certain, so don't quote me on that, but that, that would be my guess that it is decreasing their fee transaction fees um, on PayPal by sending more than just, you know, $344 or $13, things like that. You can add a message to your buyers. Mine simply is, thank you for your purchase. I hope my art can bring joy to you as it has to me. You can add whatever you'd like in that. If you're wanting to have your profile linked to your social media or anything like that, this is where you do it. You click on the link uh, to other sites. You can add your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. I've never heard of Dribble or Behance or oh, they have DeviantArt, Pinterest, Flickr, um, Google Plus, which I don't know if it is really around anymore, and your own website. You can also show off your work on your own website by embedding um, this thing, and that, that's kind of what it would look like, which is kind of cool. So I do have my own personal website, and I could add something like that to 
um, to it if I wanted to. Account settings here, when you edit your profile, um, that's where you can change your profile image, change your description, uh, and so on. Editing your payment details, I'm not going to click on that because it, it shows my address and things like that, but that's where you will be putting in your PayPal email. You'll be allowed to verify it. You'll, it'll all also ask for your uh, mailing address, um, but nothing more. Some other websites um, will ask for like government ID or things like that. Redbubble doesn't do that, which in my opinion is good because that turns a lot of people off from uh, websites like that. You can change your password there and you can cancel your account there. One thing I just wanted to quickly show you, notice at the bottom of my screen is a little bit different than it was when I am just on the home page or not on my artist das da dashboard. You can see there's a few different options here. Um, just checking here, making sure I've gone through most things. So when you sell your artwork, you don't have to do anything. You just get an email saying what you've sold and saying how much you've made. They take care of producing it and shipping it. Talked about the promoting and marketing. They do have a mobile app, but it's mainly for the customers, not for managing your portfolios. And as you can see here on the bottom, they have an affiliate program. Many websites do have affiliate programs. So this affiliate program is run via Impact. Impact is a different um, company. Similar to some and different to others, the Redbubble affiliate is promoting other people's products or your products and earning a 10% commission with a 30-day attribution window. And so it's not like some other ones such as um, ArtPal, for example, where you can refer other artists to the website. It's your sharing other people's artworks and if somebody clicks on that link and purchases something by using that link then you get a 10 percent um, commission and those links last 30 days i don't have any experience with the redbubble affiliate link i don't use it at all um, if you do feel free to leave a comment below let me know how it is for you they have the frequently asked questions here you can easily go there and they will help you join the affiliate program um, one little note here, you can purchase your own products and without the markup, so just with the base price that Redbubble would charge before you add your markups, you would be able to order those and then you could sell them at your own markets or things like that. I'm going to go back here to the home page. You can see they also have here what's called a partner program. So the partner program allows you to create fan art legally. <laughs> um, so there are a ton of brands that they have partnered with, and you're able to create fan art for those brands, get officially licensed, reach a whole new audi audience, and show off your fan art badge for those people. So here's some of them, Rick and Morty, Steven Universe, Adventure Time, um, but if you want to see all the brands, you can just click on um, this checkout entire list of currently engaged, sorry, brands currently engaged in the program. There's a whole list there. And say you wanted to do some for Jurassic World. So you, you would click on Jurassic World, and it tells you the guidelines, the do's, and the don'ts of creating fan art for them. Then you would simply create, upload your art just like I showed you before, put in the tags that they would want, and then they simply um, review your artwork, and if they accept it, then you're licensed by them to sell those uh, that artwork. And if not, then maybe they'll tell you what you can do to fix it. So it's kind of a cool thing that um, I haven't found too many other websites doing. I think that's pretty cool. 
because fan art has always been kind of an iffy place and i've stayed away from it but this gives you a for sure legal way to sell fan art all right we're gonna go back here to main page you can also see on the bottom here there is an artist blog that gives you a place where you can um, just read things that will help you on Redbubble and elsewhere. So 7 tips to self promote, that obviously works on Redbubble and off. Tagging 101, that would help you on Redbubble and elsewhere. Getting started on Redbubble is more for um, Redbubble. And so if you're looking to invest some time into it, that would be a place I would suggest that you go um, to, to get going a bit on Redbubble. One other thing that I think is kind of cool, and I've seen on a few other websites as well, but there is jobs. So if you're interested in working for Redbubble, here they tell you a little bit about it. They're in Melbourne, San Francisco, and Berlin. There's some photos there, some perks and benefits, um, and whatnot. And at the very top there, you can browse the jobs. You can see what they have available at the time and apply for them right here um, on the website. Kind of cool, I thought. And like any great website, they have a help center. So if you click on that, are you buying or selling? For you guys, it'll probably mostly be selling. So you can click on selling. They're going to help you with getting started. Fan art program, account management, designing, uploading, promoting, getting paid, troubleshooting, policies and guidelines, intellectual property uh, FAQs. It's a really good resource if you're confused about something on Redbubble to check this out and see what you can do. Let's just go to getting paid because <laughs> people always have questions about money. When, when I get emails or comments, so much of the time I feel like it's about, about getting paid. So if you click on that, then it drops down. Um, why is my last payment to PayPal failed? Can I change my currency after I set my payment method? I purchased my own designs. Why does the order not show up? When do I get paid? Why are my sales still pending? That's actually a good point. Pending. They pay you on the 15th of every month but if you're say somebody purchased something on the 13th of july for example and that product hasn't shipped by the 15th of july then i won't be getting paid until the 15th of august and as long as i've reached that threshold of twenty dollars um, so there's a lot of really good information here i encourage you to read that um, take a peek at it it will help you out um, even on getting started how do you set up your account to get paid? What if I don't have a PayPal account? Actually, I'm going to click on that, and we're going to see what it says. There you go. It says we are only able to process payments to banks located in the Australia, U.S., and the U.K. So that's why me, being in Canada, I'm only able to be paid via PayPal. So it looks like if you are in one of those three countries, you can be paid... Um, right to your bank so that's good to know all right so I think that kind of wraps up this um, this little how-to checking out their website uh, I'll just kind of end here a little bit with uh, with my my thoughts they do have bubble mail people can send you customers can send you messages or fans you can see your order history. I'm just going to go back to my shop <clears throat> as I talk about my my final thoughts here. So I think Redbubble is a quality print-on-demand platform. Personally, I haven't had any negative experiences with them thus far. They have a large variety of products that you can put your art onto, and they ship to customers worldwide, which is a great, great thing. As I kind of mentioned previously, I like and I appreciate that you can set your own profits above and beyond their base price. I also like that even if your image is small, you can still activate all the products and just set your artwork to be tiled on that product. Um, I find that this website's actually pretty easy to use. Their layout is good. Finding your sales, uploading your art, and everything is easy to find on the dashboard. Nothing's really hidden or complicated to get through. Uh, or get to, sorry, your sales and your stats. That's all straightforward. 
Um, without the Google Analytics, I guess their stats is a little bit lacking, but it's not bad. Um, I find it a positive and a negative thing that you can only sell print-on-demand products. It means they're focusing on what they're good at. Um, you're not able, like, you're not able to sell your originals. But in my opinion, if somebody is interested in purchasing an original artwork from you, they're going to contact you. Um, it can be a little bit hard to get discovered because there are so many artists on this platform. Um, also, like I mentioned before, I appreciate that they aren't loaded with paid promotions like so many other websites. Those websites make it really hard for someone who doesn't have the money to promote their or artwork and be seen. Redbubble gives you the tools to help you promote your work on social media and elsewhere. Um, lastly, I feel like print-on-demand websites such as this can be geared for graphic designers and digital artists more than traditional artists. Um, but here you can have your traditional art printed onto canvas, art paper, and other products that work for square and rectangular designs. Um, and even though they don't necessarily work on other products, at least there are products for that type of art. Um, so if you're a traditional artist, I don't think that should stop you from uploading your work onto Redbubble. I've also seen many photographers upload their work and put their work onto products in on the products that fit their type of format. So depending on what type of art you're uploading, it might determine what kind of products you decide to make available. And I just think you should give it a try. If you don't like it, it was free. You didn't lose anything. If you end up liking it, you'll be glad that you tried it. Um, these opinions are solely based on my personal experience. If you have anything you would like to share about your experiences, I encourage you to send me a message or write them in the comments below. Put them in the comments in the article on my website as well. Um, I'm not I'm not obviously being compensated for this article at all. I'm not receiving anything. You can see that I sell a handful of things each year, nothing crazy. Um, but on that same note, I don't really put any effort into my Redbubble page. I upload my products and I leave it at that. Um, I have other platforms that have been more successful for me where I spend more time on things like that. Um, I think that's it. So if you have any questions for me, please write write them in the comments below. Send me an email. My email is brian at briansloanartist.com. You can contact me on my Facebook page, Instagram. It's all either Brian Sloan Art or Brian Sloan Artist. <clears throat> Um, make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos like I mentioned at the beginning of those other websites um, so you can find out which website would work best for you um, to sell your artwork on. If you have a website that I haven't reviewed yet and you would like me to see, or sorry, if you and you would like to see me do a video of, of uh, that website, um, please let me know. I am more than open to doing reviews of more websites like this. I'm trying to help other people sell their artwork as I have sold some of mine. I am in no means um, a professional at selling my artwork online. I just like to share my experiences with you and hope that some of it um, can help you. So again, make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, make sure you hit the little bell as well so you get notifications when I put up new videos. And we will see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist. <laughs>